Cooper. Now, the stage of the midge that this is, this is the stage after the ascending midge pupa, which is another video I have here on YouTube. Uh, basically, the ascending midge pupa is the, the midge coming up um, from the bottom of the lake or wherever you are, the still water where you are, um, rivers even. Basically, that's it, just coming up to the surface and prior to emerging the, uh, well, the buzzer stage or the emerger pupa, it will straighten itself out, which is why we're using a straight shank hook. And it straightens itself out parallel to the surface of the water. Um, and then basically the shell just cracks open and out comes your little midge who flies away and dies. So, yeah, it's a nice life we've got. Um, now, the list of materials. To tie it, I'm going to use 8 uni thread in black. The rib is going to be a red holographic. It's pretty much exactly the same um, as last time. Only this time we're going to put breathers of antron wool on it that go straight. So it's going to be, it's basically a shipman's buzzer. Now, start the thread at the eye of the, the hook and just put down a layer of thread. Now the hook I'm using is a Kamazan B400 Emerger hook, size 12. You could go down smaller. Uh, it's just size 12 is what I used on the midge pupa. So I just try to keep it the same. So when you're cast, you could fish. This position is. You could fish a pupa lower down in your cast, the uh, ascending pupa, and fish one of these on a dropper. Now, I'm going to take a length of Antron wool. Now, the card I've got has only got one slit at one side, not at the other. And you can see how short I've cut the wool from the end of the card. Basically, I'm just going to take one complete turn and cut it right on the card end again. So, you get about three or four inches of wool. Now, double this over. So, you're just doubling it over and position it roughly in the middle of the hook. Sorry, in the middle so you've got an equal length at both sides. I just make sure that you've not got one side too long while the other too short. Now take a couple of turns down and then come back down uh, to the back and uh, return your thread to this in line with the barb of the hook. Now I'm going to attach in the holographic tinsel. Just cash it in on the side with a couple of turns. And now uh, two lengths of peacock hair. Now with the peacock, I've taken this, you can see that's the eye of the peacock there, I've taken this right down the bottom. You can see where the root is there where it would have been anchored, so it's been trimmed off a bit. But I've kind of took it from, off the bottom, I've took it from about here. You see the fibres are much shorter here, the, the hero actually on the fibres is much shorter here and you've got a nice slimmer body. Alternatively you could just use one. Uh, one of these up here, or if you want it a bit longer, you know, just use a couple. Um, yep, so continue your thread down, making sure you try to keep the antron wool on top of the hook at all times. Now, for the last couple of turns, which is where I find it tends to slide off to the side, I take a few big turns. Once it's on top, go back in nice close turns, just binding all that down. Don't worry about bulking this up. Now you want to stop two or three millimetres before the eye. Now with your peacock arrow you have to be really careful here. What I like to do is just moisten my fingers a bit, just to give it an extra bit of grip. And you twist you twist the two arrows together. Now you just have to be very careful when you're rubbing because it does make it uh, a lot weaker. And just Take that up, twisting it at the same time. Make sure you find it. What you're basically looking for is a nice rope effect. Now, if you twist it, it will look a bit like the best thing I could say is probably a fritz. Now, once you've got it in, just cross your thread over, keep your thread nice and tight. Oops, that's what happens when you don't keep it tight. I've got away with it this time. Couple of turns there, pull one fibre back, a few turns in between, 
both of them back and I like to just go back through, jump to the front and now they'll never pull out, you can easily snap them off. Now, get your uh, rib, you just want to counter rib it, so I wound the hair along the way I'd wind the thread, now if you're coming from under, you go towards me, then away, and this time I'm going to go from under, away, then towards me. And you want the space in between roughly, well it's up to you really, just whatever you think. And you just let a, a fine, fine amount of hair through. And just make sure that's nice and bound down before you trim it. And then trim it close. For the thorax I'm going to use a hairs, uh, the mask. Which is basically just the face hair of the, yeah, the face, yeah, the face hair of the, of a hair, the hair of the hair. Um, this is the front of the log here, and it's just a sort of fine. You can see it up the edge here. It's that fibre that you want there. So what I do is I just stroke it back. I stroke it against the grain, and then just pinch it. My fingers, go under your scissors and snip a bit off, and that's what you get. Now, just I like to just walk that between my fingers, just basically just rubbing like that your fingers together with your hand underneath to catch the, the fibers that fall out, and just gather them up. What that does is it basically just mixes them together, blends them. So, now I've got that, it hairs here can be exceptionally hard to dub, so I've got some hard wax here. Now it's important you just hold the wax in your hand uh, for a few seconds just to heat it up and basically just to sort of melt it a bit and then just put some on your thread. Now if you do that without, if you try to dub this without um, yeah, without the wax on your thread you find it incredibly hard. It's hard even with wax on your thread. Never mind without. A bit more. Now this time I'm actually going to go for some longer fibres which is actually on the face of the hair itself. And there's the, the lugs there. You basically go down and you can see where I've been taking it from. In there. So that's basically, you want the shorter fibres are towards the bottom um, and the longer fibres are between the eyes. Put a little bit more wax on your thread. There is some under fur with this so just remove some of the under fur. And then just wind that through. Now, near to this point here, we're going to tie in our cheeks, which are basically orange goose bites. It's almost exactly the same as the last one. They look red on the camera, but I can assure you they're orange. I'll sort that out for the next video. Something going on with the colour. Now, trim two of them off. And this time you want them, depending on the length of it, you want them to stretch right to the back, because we're going to trim this. And and I want them to sit angled down a bit, so just take your time to position them. You've got to be picky. Now, just do the same at the other side. Just took two turns now, I'm just going to line these up. Buttons to bind them in. I like to fold them back one at a time and just take a few turns in. Take a turn of two at the eye. Just basically binds the, the fibres down. Now come in with your scissors, trim them away. Don't worry if you leave a bit of a tag at the end, we'll cover that up with some more uh, hairs here. 
And I'm just going to get a bit more once again from the ear. Wax your thread. Rub that on. Now back into the mask. Small pinch of hair from the mask and dub that on. A bit more wax on here. Now take your thread to the front. Basically you just want to put a there's more wax than anything on this fly really. We wet wax, put it on there, and then just come in, wet finish, just went twice, and I'll tell you what this does near the end by putting the wax on it first. Now I'm gonna get some varnish. The varnish I like to use is Loon Outdoors, Hard Head. Fly varnish and clear. It's a exceptionally good varnish. Now just come in one, two, three, falls plenty. Nice and tight. Trim it off. Now, if you've got any guard tails sticking out, you know what a lot you can trim them down. You don't need to worry about small ones, for example on top here. There are some big ones though that you wouldn't want. And there we are. That's basically it. All that's left to do is just to trim trim your bias down. So what you want to do is try to do this on the opposite side. Trim them. And what I like to do is just put a wee angle into them. I can't really do it because it's round the other side of the vase. It's on the vase round. There you go. Just slightly angled them. One's angling forwards, so. Angle this side forwards. Maybe. And that there, that's your. Emerging midge pupa. All that's left to do is just cut the breathers. You want to cut them about a half to three quarters length of the body. And you will need a uh, gink on this fly just to keep it up. But you, you won't need it at all. It'll stay up for longer if it ginks up or any fly floating. So that's the ascending midge emerger or the emerging midge pupa.